Hello again, I am Blunty. So, Nintendo fathead Reggie fils is waddling around right now telling the press, amongst his other usual hyperbolous crap, that the Nintendo Switch will coexist with the 3DS. This is a lie. And rather pathetically, it is the exact same lie that Nintendo told you in 2004 when the Nintendo DS was released. Idiots believed it then and idiots believe it now. And both in 2004 and in 2017, it is a transparent and sleazy attempt at deception easily detected by anyone with even half a clue. In 2004, if Nintendo was actually serious about keeping both the DS and the Game Boy line in the market at the same time, they would be in competition with themselves, which is idiotic. Beyond that, they would force developers to either split their efforts and inflate their development costs making games for both platforms, or force them to make a choice between an aging system already having burned up half of the average useful life of a handheld console, or move to the newer, more powerful system, the one where almost all of Nintendo's own marketing was being focused on. What decision would you make if you're a game developer? The brand new, shiny, exciting, marketed, powerful DS, or the sort of three or four year old Game Boy? And even assuming that it wasn't a bold-faced lie, it was naive at best and catastrophically incompetent at worst for Nintendo to actually believe that two handheld gaming consoles from the same company, both with a single potential user base, people who want to play mobile games, smartphones not really being a thing at the time of course, would or even could coexist for very long at all in the market. The DS succeeded, of course, and the GBA was abandoned in short order. The DS was significantly more powerful than the current Game Boy model, the Game Boy Advance, while being 100% backward compatible with the Game Boy Advance. So you could buy a Nintendo DS and still play the GBA games and play the new DS games. What choice would you make if you're a consumer? The dual screens and crappy capacitive touchscreen were gimmicks useful for catching initial attention and it worked quite well for that, but the selling point for actual people, including myself, was the games, not the gimmicks. The games were better because with more power and higher screen resolution, games could be presented better, they looked nicer, they played better, they played nicer, and they were broader in scope with the expanded capabilities of the new and more powerful machine. At the time, Nintendo were in fact quite loud about the fact, in fact, that they weren't replacing the Game Boy line, that it would see long and continued support. I mean, why on earth would they abandon the Game Boy brand that's been around for so long, being so strong? They painted the Nintendo DS as their third pillar, and this lie was repeated and rephrased over and over again. And it was a lie. The only reason they tried to paint it as a third pillar and didn't give it the Game Boy branding at all is because they were afraid it would fail. They were afraid that the gimmicks wouldn't be enough to attract people. So now, if the DS failed in the marketplace, they could just fall back on their strong Game Boy brand and pretend it never happened. They could then just tell their investors and the press that the DS experiment has taught them many valuable lessons and that the next Game Boy, likely already in development just in case, would be even better as a result or some such marketing horse crap spin. But the DS was a success, a wild success as a matter of fact. It rapidly accrued a significant library of superb games, not the least of which was of course Pokemon Diamond and Pearl, which had the longest wait between Pokemon generations we've ever known, so people were color ha hammering for the new Pokemon games. Four whole years, only broken up by the Pokemon Fire Red and Leaf Green GBA remakes, which of course you could play on your DS. And the instant it was clear that the Nintendo DS was a commercial and critical success, what do you think Nintendo did with the Game Boy brand? Here's a hint. There were no more Game Boys. Ever. They let it dwindle and die. They did vomit out one last lip service Game Boy Micro, which was in fact just a smaller version of the Game Boy Advance. It was not a new machine at all. In fact, it was stripped back of many features the GBA already had, like backwards compatibility, for example. And Iwata himself called it a failure in the marketplace, for which he blamed their own marketing of the DS on. 
now, like I said as we opened, we have Nintendo skeevily hedging their bets once more. The Nintendo Switch, with their own trailer leaning heavily on the portability factor, with people on planes and in airports and being insufferable douchebags at rooftop parties, and for some reason playing basketball on it while sitting on the ground at a real fucking basketball court. Would he just kick those guys' heads in just for the sake of it? But now with the full reveal underway, they are pulling back from that slightly. They're currently trying very hard to frame it as a home console, which considering its price and performance equation is kind of dumb for them to even try to do because you can buy a PS4 instead for basically the same money and get a demonstrably superior gameplay experience. <laughs> more onboard storage, a way more powerful machine, and a vastly larger choice of titles. Oh, but the, but the Switch is a home console that you can take with you and play on the go. Well, that makes it a portable, kids. It's not a home console, a portable. It is a portable. You can hook up to your TV, but it is a portable. Just like you can, and have for many, many years now, by the way, been able to get something close to a console-like gameplay experience on your phones and tablets, a large variety of which can also be hooked up to your TV's HDMI port and be used with a nice Bluetooth controller. And it is no secret that the Nintendo Switch uses the Tegra chip, which has already been in a portable gameplay tablet experience thingy. There is nothing new about the Nintendo Switch. Ignore the marketing. This is engineered from the ground up as a portable device, not a full power home console. It is compromise and ignore Nintendo's cowardly lies. This is the planned replacement for the 3DS line. This is their new portable machine. This is how they're going to focus on one piece of hardware so they can get as many of their developers on board with one thing at a time and focus very, very hard on recovering from the absolute disaster that was the Wii U. The 3DS is going to die. Even Nintendo's own published games have given up on the 3DS's biggest gimmick, the 3D screen. Have you played the latest Pokemon game? It's really nice, but the system system is so underpowered for today's games, it can't even run that game in 3D, so they don't even use it in the game. It barely runs in 2D in some places. Anyone who's played the multi-battles in the new Pokemon game sees the massive frame drops, which because of the turn-based nature of a Pokemon game is more of an embarrassing cosmetic artifact than a gameplay ruining one. But it is very, very clear that the 3DS is at the end of its life. Even Nintendo's own published games are smashing against the walls of what the system is even capable of doing. If the Nintendo Switch is satisfactorily successful in the market, and I do mean if at this stage, because while the hardware certainly seems nice and will provide a very dramatic leap forward for Nintendo's portable gaming scene, right now the pathetically tiny launch lineup filled with Wii U ports, years old games, remakes, mini game collections and a very, very few actual new fresh AAA level games, even when you broaden the scope beyond the launch lineup, but if it is successful, mark my words, you have seen the last of the 3DS line. Maybe we'll get one last attempted hurrah, like the failed Game Boy Micro, perhaps a new, smaller 2DS with a drop-in price as a Christmas gift target for people who can't afford the new Nintendo Switch, for example, but still want to get the kids a new gameplay thingy. But it will not have a life beyond that. The 3DS is dead if the Switch lives. Nintendo are either incompetent or demonstrable liars, and either way, you should not listen to their marketing. And whatever claims fat-headed Reggie makes to any media who'll listen, he is a liar or an incompetent. Thanks for watching, I am Blunty, and I will catch you next time.